Um, one of the things that is interesting about thumb picks is that they come in a lot of varieties, a lot of different uh, sizes, shapes, materials, colors, and even though there's a wide variety, it's been my experience that most guitar stores that you walk into have an extremely limited inventory to choose from. So uh, thank goodness for the internet. Um, there are a lot of resources, a lot of places you can get just about anything you're looking for. And uh, so let's just talk a little bit about the the relatively few picks that I use. Uh, if you happened to watch my uh, interview at Guitar Town with either Tommy Emanuel or uh, Joe Robinson, you might have caught that when they were sitting there on the couch next to me doing the interview, both of them had a little pile of picks sitting next to them on the couch um, of quite a variety, but of course they also use various plectrum picks and uh, more than one different kind of thumb pick. And it was interesting to see them just pull out a, a wad of picks and set them down ready to go. Um, let me talk to you first about the pick that I started with. Uh, was one of these two varieties. And I kind of get the sense that these are still two probably of the most common ones that you'll run into in the average guitar store. Um, this one is made by National. And um, my hands are pretty big, so I wear large thumb picks in whatever variety. This one, although the name has worn off of it, uh, is a Dunlop. So a National and Dunlop are two relatively uh, relatively thick, large, uh, smooth thumb picks that have been around for a long time, and I used them for a long time. The thing that I didn't care for about these is that the plastic that they're made out of uh, tends to weaken either over time or when if you're playing in warmer weather or outside or you're just playing a hot song and your hands warm up. What, what can happen is the uh, spine back here of the pick actually warms up and relaxes its grip. And nothing is more annoying than to have your thumb pick start rotating around on your thumb and getting at the wrong angle or slipping off the end. Um, so I was pretty happy to find an alternative to these. Um, and what I use now is a product uh, by Fred Kelly picks. Um, this is a Fred Kelly, it's called a slick pick. Um, this is made out of a material that they call Delrin, D-E-L-R-I-N. And this slick pick um, it does not seem to me to have the same uh, attribute of loosening up like the, like the plastic ones do. Um, it is still adjustable. You can run hot water over it and, and tighten it up if you want to. Um, but it'll, it'll hold its shape much better. And even though it's called a slick pick, it doesn't seem to slip off of my thumb. However, it also fits me pretty snugly, and that's something else I want to talk about. A lot of people ask the question, you know, how, how tight should that pick be? This one hurts my thumb, or this one falls off. Um, I don't really know how to put it any simpler than to just say that it should be as snug as you can possibly be comfortable with. And I do think that you get accustomed to it over a period of time. Um, by, by just simply wearing it more often. Um, as far as where I, I place the pick on my thumb, um, if, if you wanted to call this the, uh, the strap of the pick back here, I typically have that strap ride the middle right over between where my nail ends and the, the skin begins on the back of the thumbnail there. So right about at that middle point, maybe just a hair forward of that. Um, so, you know, somewhere about in the middle of this joint, if you will, and, and it hangs on really nicely there. Some people have other preferences though. You'll see some guys that wear them way out here closer to the tip and other guys really crank them back here, you know, way hard up on the knuckle. Um, but I think, I think right in the middle, kind of in that little saddle right in there works the best for me. Um, as far as the shape, um, this pick you can see has a pretty wide uh, paddle, if you will, as opposed to the uh, this old National, for example, which comes with, with a relatively sharp and, and pointed, you know, curved point here, almost like a, I think we would call that a drop point if that were a knife. Um, and I, and I like this, this new, this, this uh, slick pick for the purpose that when I'm not just uh, finger pick, but I also want to flat pick, I want to do some down up strokes when I grab this guy and pinch it like I would a flat pick. The 
the down upstroke stuff, that wider paddle tends to give me the option of rotating a little bit and curving up and down off of those strings, um, which is kind of a speed technique that some flat pickers use. Another thing about this particular pick is it is a, uh, a light gauge pick. Now that's Fred Kelly's definition of it. Um, I was reluctant to try this first and I actually, uh, uh, credit goes to Keith Ostermiller, one of our, our GM Play students here for pointing me toward these. I used to wear the Fred Kelly heavy gauge picks, uh, thinking that I needed the heavy gauge plastic so that it would hang onto my thumb. What I was pleased to find out about the light gauge pick is that it's actually heavy material all the way around here on the support part, but then out on the tip where you're actually picking the guitar, it's tapered, and that's where the thin is, is just out on the tip here, not on the, the structure of the pick. So it still hangs on good, but I have a nice thinner, not, not ridiculously so, it's still, I would say that's probably still what a, a flat pick might be rated as medium. Um, but it's, it's for me, it's a very comfortable and nice uh, compromise of all of the different things that I like to do with this pick. Um, there is another pick that I do use, and that is um, uh, this one. is also a Fred Kelly pick, and this they call the Speed Pick. And it's kind of an unusual design. I'm not aware of anybody else that, that is doing this right now. But what they've done is, is they've separated out the picking uh, appendage here, cut back in here quite a ways so that it flexes from way back inside, but you still have this surface out here to hang on to your thumb. Um, so it's actually a very tiny little pick. Um, Doyle Dykes uses this on all of his acoustic steel string picking for everything he does. I tried to start doing that, but th where this pick fell down for me was on the down up flat picking that I just told you I like about this one. However, the two places where I use this pick um, a lot, if not exclusively, is whenever I'm playing a classical, a nylon string classical guitar, um, I like that softer uh, picking, you know, picking surface on that guitar and then also on a banjo because the, the thumb on a banjo, on a five string banjo anyway, is riding up on top on the smallest string out of all five. And having that lighter thumb on there, I think helps balance it out to a nice, a nice sound. Um, if I'm not doing flat picking type of stuff, I also like to use it on an electric guitar just because typically those run just a little bit lighter gauge string. Um, so that's what I use the um, speed pick for. And then this is a, um, this is actually a bear claw. And um, I just have it in my pocket. I don't use it to play the guitar. All right. <laughs> anyway, so the other question I was asked is, is, uh, is it okay if, I'm, if I don't like, for example, how far out the pick sticks or the shape of it, is it okay to file it down and change it? Absolutely. I've seen, I've seen people take them down and file them really aggressively shorter. In fact, here's a, uh, here's a uh, Dunlop here that, that by comparison, when I stick my thumb in there, doesn't have anywhere near as much, you know, pick sticking out as this guy does. And I don't really care for that myself. You might like it. It might give you better control. Um, but I like to have the length of that picking surface as a little miniature uh, on the fly volume knob, if you will. What happens is if I play, um, I'll tilt this out a little bit. Maybe you can see down on top. When I, when I lightly dig into the string, just like you would with the plectrum, the less, um, the less I dig into the string, the lighter the approach. Without necessarily picking any harder, the farther in I, I go on that and play, I get a bigger sound, a, a more aggressive attack. This is obviously something, a touch thing that you'll learn to do over a long period of time, but the more you dig in with that, the more sound you can get or you can back off. I like having that option. Um, but it may, it may feel weird to you if you don't have complete control of your thumb yet in terms of digging in or not, um, it may feel a little bit weird. You may need to uh, start with a different pick and work into something else. Um, I guess one final comment about the thumb pick. As far as getting used to it, if you are coming from, let's say, a classical background or, you, or you're used to playing without a pick, 
just keep in mind that what you, you've had to do in the past, most likely, is play with your thumb at relatively an angle to the strings to get some kind of nail reinforcement on your, on your uh, attack. Even if you don't play with the nail, although a lot of people do, you still need that reinforcement to get a good precise attack. So you maybe have gotten used to playing with this angle. Don't forget now that what the thumb pick is doing is requiring your thumb to run parallel to the strings because the thumb pick obviously comes off at a right angle there and, and needs to go straight into the strings. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's just something you need to be aware of. The reason it's good is because it also brings your hand down in here and sets you up big time for palm muting. You can have your palm all the way down on the strings or up and your thumb is still at the working angle for the thumb peg. Okay, that's one of the big advantages of going this route. Um, so as far as uh, where I get my picks, um, you can certainly get them these, you can certainly get them from Fred Kelly directly. I like to go to elderly.com, uh, it's elderly music, and they have, in addition to these, a whole lot of other picks that you can choose from, including the, uh, the blue Hercos, which are the ones that our other instructor, Hawkeye Herman, uh, likes to recommend. I have not personally tried those, but I suspect that they're similar in, in function and, and the reasons that I like these. Nice thing about uh, elderly.com is you can order in smaller quantities and, uh, and actually at a cheaper price than from the factory. Um, so give that a try. Uh, this information is also on my profile as far as where I get them and what I use. So if you, if you forget or didn't write it down, you can look it up there. Thanks for watching and I hope you go get a thumb pick right now.